Hey guys, Omar here and welcome to my home. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, we did a little mini road trip to Rhode Island to see the mansions of Rhode Island and I thought it was a perfect opportunity to bring the Fujifilm 10 to 24 millimeter, the only lens I brought. Actually, I have the 16 in my bag, that's a lie. <laughs> but uh, I think the 10 to 24 is a perfect lens to do, you know, architecture and the kind of trip that we're doing here. So just to play around with the 10 to 24, I'm using the Fuji X-T2 for this and let's go. <laughs> Okay, a couple of things to note about the lens. One, no, it's not weather sealed. So right now it's misting and it's pretty gross out. Uh, usually a little rain, I'm not worried about my lenses, but if you do need weather resistance, just think about that. <laughs> so this must be all beautiful in the spring, but right now uh, we had a little bit of a snow, but sometimes you don't need 10 millimeters. Like look how far and small this looks. I could hold it in my hand. So sometimes here is 24, you're far enough. This is the 24, you get better compression. I'm gonna back up a little bit here. And so 24, you know, so you can use this as your shot and this may be something a little bit more dramatic. So 10, 14, 24. So the lens is perfect for this kind of thing if you're like visiting mansions or if you're looking at churches or temples or mosques places where there's beautiful ceilings. I have the 16 millimeter 1.4, but that just really isn't wide enough all the time. So I find that the 10 to 24, I'm shooting it at 10 like all the time, but nice to punch into 24 every now and then. Uh, so I find that I've been zooming into 24 if I wanna get a better detail shot of something. So nice that it's not a prime 10 millimeter, that's a great. And the image stabilization I'm using right now, or if I'm doing video, is very useful for vacation. All right. Hey, there's water there. Dun dun. And a kid! Get over here! Super fun, super wide, now it's raining, oh my gosh. But the fun thing about the lens, you gotta shoot it at 10, yo. That's number one. Uh, the F4 may be a hang up for some of you. I, I, there were a couple of times where I grabbed the 16 millimeter 1.4 for its 1.4, uh, cause I had a couple rooms where the ISO was a little too high, 6400. Sometimes that gets a little too grainy and gross. So if you wanna keep your ISOs down, you might have to sacrifice some of the wideness and go with the 16 millimeter. So I found that a couple of times. F4 in really dark rooms was lame. Uh, but man, if you're just walking around, let me not die here. <laughs> if you're just walking around a town or something, 10 to 24. Uh, the other great thing about the 16 millimeter 1.4 is it has the aperture ring. So you can actually set your aperture by looking down at the lens. Here you have to check the little electronic readout. 
So that sometimes takes you away from the manual aspect of the Fuji system. You know, you set your ISO with a dial, you set your shutter speed, but your aperture, you can't look down and set. You have to look at the electronic readout. So that might be a hang up for some of you. The other two uh, things to think about if you have this lens. One, if your lens hood gets skewed and you don't notice it, it's gonna show up in all your pictures. So make sure you double check that it's clicked right into place. And the other thing to think about is this lens is a little big for the Fuji X-T20 or X-E3, the smaller cameras. Uh, the kit lens is a little bit more balanced on those cameras. This one fits fine on the X-T2 or X-T3 body. But think about it, if you have the smaller lenses, you may want to try it first because it'll be really bulky. It is a little large to kind of walk around with all the time if your goal is to have a smaller kit. You may want to stick with the kit lens or some of the primes that are tinier. So it does make your kit a little bigger, which could be a negative for some of you if you're downsizing. <clears throat> okay. And the last thing I'll mention is the image stabilization. Obviously, I'm walking around right now with the iOS on. So if you don't have the X-H1 series that has image stabilization in body, uh, your only choice may be this or the 18 to 55 for a dual video sort of, you know, photo hybrid. But I love the wide for travel. I think this will be my travel lens more than the 18 to 55 because I like to shoot wider personally and I just like the dramatic look of wider photographs and to pair up with this I would bring the 56 1.2 I think this and the 56 or this and maybe the 35 or if you have the 50 millimeter f2 that those two would be a great combo if you don't need anything super telephoto uh, that could cover a lot of stuff if you like shooting wide if you're in nature or in some of the national parks, this is almost a no-brainer um, if you're doing hybrid video and photo because of the image stabilization. So there you have it, guys. I totally had a great time with this lens. Uh, it was a, a actual borrowed lens from B&H. Thank you to B&H for lending it to me, but I'm actually going to buy it from them because I love it so much and it fits my style of shooting so much more than I thought. So, all right guys, I'll see you guys next time. It's cold, dang it, it's cold.